the latest episode of Forever Bristol City podcast. Uh, I'm joined today by Mark, Ian, and a welcome return to the panel for uh, Les. The final score up at the Stadium of Light, it finished Sunderland nil, City nil. So the good is that's extended the unbeaten run to three. It's a third clean sheet in a row and a point away from home in dreadful conditions with half a dozen players out injured is no mean achievement. As I do with uh, everyone every week, I just want, and keep it brief, 30 seconds from all of you of your thoughts on the final whistle. I'll go with you first, Les. Far away, mate. Um, well, I don't think we played very well, uh, but when you've won your last two games a point away from home, you ain't going to complain about. Obviously, the bedwetters and the cult of knives, you're going to be very disappointed that we didn't get beat. Um, but seven points from three games, I'll take that. And you ain't going to play at your best every week. And good teams get points and they don't play well. We didn't play well, we got a point. So I ain't complaining. OK, that's pretty good. Very positive, Les, I have to say. Um, Ian, your uh, your thoughts? We got a point away from home in awful conditions. I think, I don't know if you'd agree, but I think high wind ruins a game of football more than anything else. I'd rather play in the snow or on a, a really heavy pitch. Um, but yeah, we got a point. We made some... Um, uh, Max played out of his skin. Uh, he's, he's definitely got to be, and I think, the top five goalkeepers in that division. And uh, I didn't realise they had so many things in plastic bags up in Sunderland, but my Lord, I wouldn't want to be a, a bin man collecting that lot up after the game. So, yeah, we, we got a point. On to, and we've now got two own games coming up. The only thing I'm concerned about is the ongoing injury, uh, injury list with missing... Rob Dickey today, Taylor Gardner, Hickman, on top of the ones that are already injured. I mean, we had we had three centre abs out today, uh, and it, it's going to get very unless the new medical director uh, that will come in to replace Dave Rennie, uh, unless he's a miracle worker, we need to have an enlarged squad because otherwise we just can't go on saying, oh well, it's you know it's only three or four injuries, and lots of other clubs are getting piles of injuries. Newcastle, Man United had all their Left, left-sided left defenders out. So it's not just us, but we're suffering because we've got a very small squad. Hence, what happened today, I fully expected because our squad's injury-prone, hence very inconsistent, and it's as simple as that. OK. Mark, uh, your thoughts? Uh, I think the plus points were the fourth uh, clean sheet in five. Um, Max O'Leary was outstanding, and Viner played well as well. But um, the game was ruined by a swirling wind that Sunderland seemed to take advantage of much better in the first half than we did in the second. Our passing was really sloppy, but the mitigating circumstances where City just looked really tired um, following those those two wins uh, over, over Easter. And I think they can mitigate it to some extent because... You know, losing uh, your best your best player in Rob Dickey and not having really any depth uh, with a with a uh, uh, with a defensive midfielder in Taylor Garner Hitman who can also play in in other positions really stretched us today. Just didn't look sharp really up up front. Didn't really keep the ball well at all. And some of the decision making in the final third was awful. Pring uh, being being the main the main culprit. But we took a point. And we, you know, we got away with one thanks to Max, and we got five. We just got okay. five more games. Four of them are probably winnable. Norwich being the toughest. Okay, I mean, I'm just picking up on a comment that Dave Febs has said on the text feed. They're tired or a few half-hearted. I mean, Chris, I put this on the on OTIP uh, with the link to this uh, broadcast. You know, this business about multiple games. I mean, for goodness' sake, you know, he said something else then. We played Friday, Monday, and now we've played Saturday. And that came on the back of a two-week break. Sorry, doesn't wash in my book. Yeah, you know, the same for both sides. The weather, they made more use of the win when they had it and all the things that you said. Look, I mean, there are positives, as we said right at the top of the programme. There are positives. Les has said it, seven points from three games, no goals conceded. It is good. But goodness me, you know, I mean, I, again, I'd put this out there on OTIP. The next three home games or the final three home games of the season, I want to see three five-star performances. By that, I mean this front foot 
attacking football with a bit of desire. They had more desire than we had today. They had two players outfield in Jack Clark that, and Bellingham that on another day they'd have come out of that 5-1 winners. But we had, as all of you have said, a top-class goalkeeper in Max O'Leary who has silenced his critics 100%. He's got there on merit. And I think that's the 10th clean sheet he's kept uh, this season. So well done, uh, Max. Let's get into the lineups. Um, Les, we're, we're thin on the ground, but when you can still put out a bench that's got um, McCrory on there, who's a versatile player, Williams, Cornick, Andy King, versatile player, Tommy Conway, right? Okay, it stops at there. Um, it's, you know, every, every side's got to cope with injuries. We do seem to have more than most, but was it a weakened side today? Dickie, obviously, but... You know, we plugged the gap effectively, I thought. What did you think, Les? Well, I think Rob Dickey's been probably the player of the season. So, if you're losing your best centre-back and you're getting someone to fill in who ain't really a centre-back, then that's going to cause problems, uh, you know, going forward in midfield, whatever, because people ain't going to have the same level of confidence that they did they do when they got Dickey in there. I don't think Hayden Roberts played very well. I think he struggled a bit. Um yeah, you can have a great bench, but if you ain't got no centre backs, it's going to be difficult, isn't it? Yeah. What about what about McCrory in that position? Yeah, I mean, is he? Yeah, he's versatile. He's got the physique to do it. And Dave Febbs has just said Roberts is a centre back anyway. That's his preferred position. Well, listen, he's someone who's played left back. He's someone who's played centre back. He's someone who's played left of a back three. He's not an out and out centre back. Um, a lot of the time at Derby, he played on uh, the left wing back position. Um, so it's not how many times he played there for us in a two. No, fair, com fair comment. Ian, um, the, uh, the, the, the bench, I mean, he, he didn't name a full bench. It would have been nice. Yeah, again, we, we've said this before, putting kids on for experience, but, you know, Dickie apart and the regulars out, Ben Aroos, Nate Smith, Atkinson, more recently, Taylor Garner, Hickman and Bell. Every club's got to put up with it. I read today, I was trying to find out what had happened to Joe Morell, actually, and he suffered a season-ending injury. And when I read the press release on that, Portsmouth lost three of their players to season-ending injuries about two months ago. They're still there at the top of that division. But, you know, you just got to like it and lump it, haven't we, really, with injuries? <laughs> it depends how big Portsmouth squad. So, and, and the three players that got injured, what position did they play? Were they all centre-backs? Um, so, so no, I mean, we've got, it's coming back to this thing about players who can play in a position. I, having seen Hayden Roberts play, and I rate him as a player, um, I think he'd be, he's decent in a three. Uh, I, I wouldn't really fancy him as much as Dickie and Viner, and that's the point, in a back um I, I wouldn't fancy it in a back four uh so i know people say oh well we we, we played a three but I, I thought first half we were really all over the place and manning changed it half time and went to a more if you want to call it an orthodox five but it, it was better but it wasn't a lot better so um i, I think it's something that we're whether we like it or not we're going to have to put up with until it either stops or we increase the size of the squad by three or four players. And I can't see the board signing that off. No. So well, Manning, has to Manning has to deal with it. Um, and sometimes, and that's why we're injury prone and we're inconsistent. Now, some of you say, well, I can tell you another, another team is totally injury prone and they're not inconsistent. Then, then great. I mean, but, we are where we are with the with what we've got and there needs to be a lot of thinking about how we cure that because it, it it was was that i mean if you look at today for everybody on here was that unexpected did you think wow i didn't think it'd be like that because i didn't i wasn't surprised i was disappointed i, I was an awful game of football um mm -hmm. and I, and sunderland i've always I, what i think about them in terms of playing football, had they had a centre forward like 
I'll say even the standard of Wells or Conway. They'd have walloped us at Ashton Gate and they'd have walloped us today. Yeah. Okay. And and you've got good players in that team, but they have they're the epitome of a team that plays nice football a lot of the time, but they've got absolutely no cutting edge. I mean, you've got players in there like Roberts, Clark. They brought Roberts in Dak off the bench. Clark's been injured. That that's why, you know, the, their forms uh one of the reasons there's form forms gone to hell in a handcart. But you know, they're um we've got to we've got to find a solution if we if we want consistent performances it's all right you dave saying well i expect the three home games we've got um, no, I'm just to, be, to be this that that's and the what, other but I'm, you'd have to you'd have, I, I well you'd have to you'd have to tell me why you expect that and who's going to be fit because i don't expect it i right, always I expect, last I mean, last I'm four not, years i've always traveled in hope rather than expectation right. and anybody well, that is expecting it right. I, I i think you're going to be disappointed oh well, there you go well let's just just mark what what do you think i mean sunderland again this is a comment i picked up average age of the sunderland team was 22 today a bunch of kids basically yeah with a couple of starlets in there as we just said right um you know i and i look at i've just said what's on our bench you know and if, if we'd have lost Dicky and Viner, for instance, you know, you still got, I mean, Andy King's played at bloody centre half a couple of times under duress. You know, what? And Ian keeps saying, oh, we need a bigger squad. I'm not disagreeing with him on that. But was that a particularly weakened side today, Mark, in your view? In it, well, in terms of uh, our, our, our best. Our, our best 11 if we have a best 11 yeah it was i mean i think it probably was asking a lot for us to show you know any energy and step on from the uh from the plymouth game because that wasn't a great performance we just don't seem just don't seem to do it but mm. you, you worry about the, the next injury with city because they're so so con you know they're so constant you know knight's going to get a knock that'll that'll take him out or or matty matty james who's been a little bit injury prone misses maybe 10 games a season so that that's the worry uh and you know the intensity of games i think you know does does cause injury and tiredness as well which is probably a mitigating circumstance but sunderland just seemed to pass the ball around better but i think they you know they failed i mean bellingham just he would he would just he he favored he, he took too long over his shooting and jack clark if he had a left foot He'd be a he'd be a Premier League player in an instant. You know, he'd probably be he'd be playing regular Premier League football because he's so he'll right footed. Move. He'll probably get a move in the summer. Yeah, he's just too right footed, really. He, he, you know, he likes to play on the left and come in on the right, but he doesn't seem to do anything with his left with his left no. foot. Um, but yeah, they just seemed they just seemed to be a lot mo more mobile. And the best player for them, I think, was was Equa. You know, big yeah, strong no, central well. midfielder. Uh, didn't lose any any you know strong on the ball directing directing play won lots of tackles you know our equivalent would have been Matty James today and I think we're expecting a lot of him but he didn't have a he didn't have a great game by comparison and I think that's the problem where we're a very like like Neil said on previous podcasts we're very inconsistent we're a mid table team and this is what we got to expect until we we make some changes in the summer and this will be what it's like until the end of the season we want better we want to see better and I'm sure it's not like the tr the players aren't trying. The players, are, I'm sure, the players are trying. It's just a lack of quality. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, picking up on uh, Johnny Pine has said on the text feed, Dicky being out doesn't make our players pass so poorly and make poor decisions. And even Chris. I think David forgot to pay to to put his fifty pence in. Everybody, shall we? Uh, is everybody else? Is everybody yeah, else I'm, still I'm okay. I think Les is okay as well. Yeah. Do we? Who, who's uh, up next? Well, I'll, I'll ask the question. So, if losing Dicky can make us that much different from, say, the game we played against Leicester, um, how important is is it for us to get? Probably a daft question, but how important is it for us to get Atkinson, Naismith uh, back? so they can at least play i don't know 25 games a season over to you mark yeah very important i mean naismith now he's missed 28 games 
I think you can write him off. He's got another year left on his contract. Nobody's going to want to take him now. He's not going to. He's only going to be a squad player going forward because he he can't be trusted to play any games because he's injury prone. Um, hopefully, Atkinson will be back for the start of the season. Uh, once he's recovered from his hamstring issues, and I've, I feel really bad for the guy because it looked like he was he had two comeback games and suffered that that torn hamstring in the second one uh, at the start of in January February. So I think Jamie Knight the Bell can he play play centre back or uh, or is he uh, a, a full back Ian? No, he's a he's a he's a centre back and he's actually got I think he's got one of the best jumps on him. At the club, but he is a, a right centre back, really. I mean, he, he could play right back. Um, Les, uh, right, I'm going back what, in the room. I think I'm back. In you the room are now. back in the room, my son. Don't there worry, I, I've let's handled get it. In. Let's get. Let's I've get. I've handled it. There we go. All right, I, let's I've get handled it terribly. Les was just going to tell us all about uh, Rob Dickey and how important he is to the club. Well, go on, Les. How, 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 much, have we, how much have we paid for him? Seven hundred. Uh, Six hundred thousand. It's a bargain, isn't he? I and think so. Him, him along with Jason Knight have been our two best players this season. Yeah. But, I mean, I know we've got a few injuries in midfield at the moment, so it makes it difficult if Knight got injured. But I think losing Dickey, if it was long term, which apparently it ain't, um, if we lost him long term, that would have a big impact on us going forward as well with, with Twine's delivery. He's a threat in both boxes. I mean, he's slow. He's really slow, but. You you got to remember that a year and a half ago he was being touted by Premier League sides, and then he had a horrible season at QPR, where QPR fans were delighted to get rid of him. But he's just one of these players. I think he needed a change of scene, and, to and get that was confidence back. And that was a bit like Dan Bentley when he came to us from Brentford. To be fair, wasn't it? Yeah, because he he was touted as being yeah. top dollar. And when, uh, you're paying, when you're paying that much money or that little money. Um, I think he's been a very good signing. Yeah. Jason okay. Let's next get to, into, let's get into next the to George Tanner. He's got to be one of the best value for money signings down there. I mean, I think George Tanner cost us 250 grand. I've, and he and scored six worth. goals this season, hasn't he, Dickie? I mean, he's always yeah. worth, he's worth his weight. He'll goals get as well. Yeah, and he's you know he's a threat. He's a threat from corners and stepping out of defence. He does look good. Um, we need to make more of that. You know, when we play the split centre backs, and he can pass a ball. Yeah. All right. Let's get into the action now then, chaps. Um, we started well enough because Mametti went on a run, but a poor pass. It did lead to a corner, but that was an early start for us. And then uh, I thought on the seven minutes, a Knight left a leg dangling when O'Sheaf, or however you pronounce it, the French lad, went through. But uh, the first save of note from uh, Man of the Match, Max O'Leary, came on 10 minutes. Zach Viner did well conceding a corner. Um, it went off Pring's back, and Ballard was there with a header. That was a good. That was a good one, Mark, wasn't it? Yeah, first good save. Yeah, but they 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 put on a put us under a lot of pressure, uh, throwing players forward. And yeah, the corner comes in, hits um, hits um, uh, Cam Pring on the back with Bellingham, I think, screaming for some pushing, and then falls back to Ballard. Ballard climbs over one of our players and heads the ball. Now, I think Matt, uh, I think uh, Sykes is behind uh, Max, but he scoops the ball back powerfully with his hand. It's a, it's a really good one and his save, and that was the, the first of many. Yeah, what did you think of uh, that particular save, uh, Ian? Yeah, it was the first, but it was good build-up leading to it from... Uh, Zach did well to get the corner away, didn't he, yeah? Leading up to I it. think um, it's, it's classic modern defending where a lot of defenders don't take any notice of the ball and they just grab all the bloke. Now, we saw it when we should have had a penalty against Leicester when Chowdhury did it to, to Dickey. And it, it, they virtually got the guy in a bear rug. Mm. And it, 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 I, I don't know, people say, well, if referees give penalties for it, they're going to be giving five or six a game. Well, let's have some of that because it only take a fortnight and they stop doing it. Uh, but it's just ridiculous at the moment. And Cam's trying to look at the bloke and stop him and grab him and get in his way. If he's facing the ball, I'd back him to head that away, in, uh, beat Bellingham in the air every day of the week. Uh, because, I, I, I mean, Bellingham is, obviously, he's not as highly rated as his brother. But um, when you've got that name, people are going to pay you attention. 
But I wouldn't, I wouldn't swap Bellingham for Tommy Conway or, or an informed Tommy Conway. Let's put it that I way. Think, because I think that's the rider. I think that's the rider to put on there. Yeah, exactly, informed. exactly that, Dave. But um, you know, I, I, yeah, good save by Max. I know Mark Sykes was behind him on the line somehow. Um, but fair play to the man. He, he scooped it out. We know the ball didn't go over the line because of the referees um, of the goal line decision system. So yeah, fair play to him. Yeah, Les, um, James committed a clumsy foul on the edge of the box, but they had a good free kick that was blocked. But then we did uh, what we did against Leicester when uh, Zach Viner did a poor uh, clearance, uh, went straight to Bellingham. That was another, it was another good save, wasn't it, from, uh, uh, from, from, from Max, you know, and just looking back, as I did the other day, those saves he did against Leicester, he's right at the top of his game at the moment. Even his kicking is uh, without any not warranting of any criticism is it he's very good at those reactionary saves where he hasn't got to think about it uh, and he's good with crosses in the box the thing that worries me about him is like the goal that Leeds scored at their place earlier in the season Peru which was a pass back from 25 yards out which he couldn't which he didn't save so in terms of his reactions and his shot stopping from close range, you know, he's better than anyone I can think of that we've had in recent years. Yeah. Uh, but he does seem to be susceptible to that outside of the box, edge of the box shots or whatever. Um, but look, he did very well today. I mean, I'm, I think Sunderland, with their chances, made it quite easy for him. The Bellingham shot, it wasn't in the corner. There was no pace on it. And then yeah. the rebound from Clark at the angle, he hit it first time and it was a good save. Yeah. You know, it was a good height. Um, if they'd gone in, I'd probably be asking questions as to why they'd gone in. Because, of course. So, again, if your cup half empty, you're saying he's just really doing his job with ones like that. And that double save, that was pretty good as well. Um, Mark, um, we, we, we finished the first half reasonably. Yeah, and we had a chance on the half hour when uh, Sykes was fouled. Twine had his free kick cleared. Uh, it wasn't an ideal position for Twine, but I'll come to each of you on this. You first, Mark. What do you think of Scott Twine? Because I put my cards on the table. I do not think he is worth even two and a half million quid as a marquee signing in the summer. Never mind 15, 10 million marquee signings. For us, two million is a marquee signing. I'm not impressed. What did you think, Mark, with his performance today? And I noticed somebody on the feed earlier during the game on OTIB said he was hiding a couple of times rather than take a tackle. But what did you think of him today? I think he went in and out of the game. And I just don't think he's he's up to full sharpness next uh, uh, at the moment. I mean, he missed he missed about seven weeks through injury. And I don't think we've seen, we've seen the, the best of him. Um, he didn't have a great game today, but neither did a lot of players, really. He, you know, we I think we, we're expecting him to be the player in that uh, behind the front man or in the free who's going to unlock unlock opposition defences. Um, he didn't have to do that today because, you know, uh, Sunderland weren't defending deep. It was quite an open game. But, yeah, it's a tough one, really. I mean, he's certainly not the player who uh, came to us with a, with a reputation and he played nearly every game for Hull this season uh, uh, and he got three goals up there, scored in his first game. But I think the injuries just set him right back. So he's been unlucky. Um, More bloody injuries again, you know. Yeah, it's, so it's down to injuries. City. I think he's, he just lost his sharpness and hopefully in the final five games we'll see a better Scott Twine. We'll yeah. just have to wait and see, Dave. I mean, it just depends what he does between now and the end of the season. But well, and that's great why today. we've got three home games, no easy games, of course, but Blackburn, Huddersfield and already relegated Rotherham. They're right down there. Ian, I mean, we, we almost took, I won't say an undeserved lead at halftime, but it was a cross from Wells and then Patterson fumbled it and then Twine's effort was off the line. So that was a, a chance. But what's your opinion of Twine so far, Ian? Do you, do you agree with Mark that he's you know, a bit like McCrory? He's not got up to speed yet? Well, I think he needs to do a lot more for me. I take the point about he's not the hardest tackler in the world. I mean, that you can apply that to a few of our players, in all fairness. There are times when I look at sometimes where you, you need to put a foot in wherever you're playing on the field. And we've got players that don't do that. 
Uh, and that once again comes back to the amount of competition it, there is in strength in the squad. Um, and it comes down to people's personalities. I mean, I played with people who, I don't know, they, they dive in front of a bus and try and tackle that. And I, I play with other people who, who jump out the bloody way of the thing. Um, so, you know, we've had a lot of players like that over the years and we've had some that really like to tackle, you know, your Tommy Doherty's uh, and, and people like that. Um, I, I remember Steve Galliers. He was he was five foot four, and he wanted to fight everybody on the field every minute he was on there. So you don't have to be the size size of a Rob Dickey right. to to go in. But I, I, yeah, I wouldn't pay big money for Scott Twine on what I've seen so far. Okay. Having said that, the stat still applies. When Scott Twine starts, we don't lose. Yeah. Um, Les, your view on He's only started four, so we need for me, he needs to start more games between now and the end of the season, and I want to see some goals and assists, please. Which he which he should do. Uh, Les, your your view on Twine and Alan Gwinnell said on the text feed here, it's the same with Ward Prowse. You never see him in the game except for his free kicks. And I think you're not comparing like with like there, maybe in terms of uh, ability. And you know, we've not he's we've not had a chance to see him really take a free kick of no but your opinions les on 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 scott so far i mean i, I would sign him up without any hesitation at all because i think he has that creativity and that quality on the ball that no one else in our side has and i think he can open doors and he's only games he played three games four games coming back from full coming back to full fitness you can't write him off and who are we going to get that's better than him at the same price do you know what i mean and he's worked under manning before manning manning got the best out of him um previously and you say you know he's not doing enough in games well he was the one player who had a shot on target today who nearly scored so, yeah you know he had, a, he had a shot cleared off the line um yeah. well if you said to me two and a half million he's yours i'd sign him every day of the week uh, two and a half million three million think... three and a half million i'd, I'd sign him because i think we ain't going to get much better than him and i think how, how many goals do you think his set pieces could get us a season five six ten. Goals, some decent delivery ten goals yeah um and i think i think i think he needs time to get back to full fitness he's missed a lot of football he hasn't played in his favorite position for whole um he's got a track record of success under manning um for me i would definitely sign him up but that's my okay. fair enough that's good so continuing with the action um second half we got the wind behind us i nearly said there's a song title there the wind beneath our what mark you know that one don't you wind beneath our sails is it or something wind beneath our wings wind, wind beneath, beneath our wings, wings. there we go <laughs> We do have a free kick on uh, 56 minutes, which Twine took. I think Roberts uh, headed it on. Matty James, I mean, he's he's been a success for us this season, hasn't he? He got his shot away and it was, I don't have any shots we had on target. I haven't checked, but that was a good effort from Matty Two. James, wasn't it? Was that it? Oh, no, the one right at the end of the half, yeah? So, Matty James's one was blocked, was it? Yeah, yeah no, yeah, no, that was two. He had two shots on target. Right. That, one, that was and Matty one. James, yeah. <laughs> the other one yeah the other one <laughs> yeah so that and that was followed by the substitutes the first, well we'd have one substitute right at the start of the second half McCrory on for uh Mimetti, who was is infuriatingly invisible inconsistent what do you think the substitutions mark wells and sykes going off and conway and williams coming on you know was it was it it wasn't like for like for a change in some respects was it mark um no um well uh not for not the williams one i think that was to, to bolster us in midfield really give us a little bit more more grit uh you know in midfield that we were lacking because um you know sunderland were having the ball so i think i think that was that was fair enough um yeah, not a lot to say really because I wasn't expecting no, much. I know, in the we're game. struggling a bit. But, to yeah, I mean, we, we just we were just struggling to create any chances. What we when we were coming out of defence, you wanted the ball to stick, and it just wasn't. I'd never seen a game when both sides lost possession so often. Sloppy passing. I mean, the second half, Sunderland were better in the first half, and the second half, the way that the ball just went backwards and forwards for some awful passing. 
yeah. it was it was untrue you know both managers must have been thinking what do i what do i teach them in training they're obviously not listening they must have cloth ears but yeah. um yeah i mean it was much of a muchness really i think um I mean, McCrory, again, you know, threatened, threatened to do well down the right. But, you know, players getting goal side of him didn't re- with McCrory because of his uh, uh, osteomyelitis. You've just got to expect that with him. He, he's a better, he's an impact. So, he's an impact so uh, you're, you're, you're mitigating a somewhat indifferent start to uh, McCrory's career at Bristol City to his osteomyelitis. Which well, indif- be- indifferent. I mean, I say the poor guy. I mean, his career could have been over. Lost in his career, didn't it? Well, if you okay. if you look at if you look at the you know acute osteomyelitis, what it can do to the bone, you think crikey, the the poor guy had to go through that, and he would just I mean, he would have been absolutely on the floor, you know, with tiredness. So he's had yeah. to he's had to do a pre season during the season just to come back from that. So I think you'll see much more of a direct uh, at- attacking hungry um, right sided player next next season, but it'll probably be used as an impact subs in the remaining games. So mm. uh, you know, just you know, best of luck to him for his future career because he uh, he could have easily lost it. Yeah, you know, Ian with with McCrory, as you say, that debilitating injury. We're saying we're not seeing the best of Twine. We've been out. We've been without Benarus. Uh, over a year now, uh, Naismith, Mr. Sicknote, but he's still got a year left on his two years for Benarus. Uh, not Ben, I meant to say Atkinson's been out for a while. Sorry, Benarus, it was he's he's unproven yet, in my view. Benarus, but Ian Dickey, uh, sorry, Naismith and Atkinson, McCrory and Twine, right? Players that for various reasons haven't featured for us so far. If you're the board, you might be saying, okay, right. We need to go and bring some extra players into the squad. But actually, with a full pre-season in them, this would be almost like having four new signings anyway, won't it? And this season has been a bit of a write-off. What say you to that from me there? If I was Liam Liam Manning, I'd say, yeah, but you do realise when those four come back, another four will be out injured. Because that... And when they when people say, fuck you, you're being a bit negative there, Liam... I'd say, well, I'm not. I'm just basing it on history of the last four years mm. because that's how it's been. And in all fairness, when Nigel Pearson first took over, um, not when he first took over, but during that Dean Holden, Nigel Pearson half year or two-thirds a third year, we had 21 players out injured at one time. Yeah. So David Rennie, in all fairness to him, improved on that. But that just goes to show how important your medical team is. And I think the most important signing um, we're, we're making will be the guy that replaces Dave Rennie as a medical director. Well, because well, have we got him I yet? Still is, think, I still it's think it's something down there is wrong. Don't ask me what it is because that's not my sphere of expertise. But it, you, can't have, you can't have a small squad with lots of injuries. You can have a big squad so you can live with a few injuries, yeah. But having a small squad, then having four to six players out nearly all the time, 12 were out at Cardiff, uh, the, the game where Nigel lost his job. So it just it doesn't it doesn't matter. You bring in Pep Guardiola. If he hasn't got half his team, he's not going to do as well as he w- would with all of his team or a, a very decent proportion of um of of those people being available and i'm just being pragmatic about this as i said before i don't care less who the manager is but you know you get a new bloke in you imagine day one he walks in and says right where's the first team squad then oh well that's them over there well hang on there's only 12 blokes over there yeah well of course we've got um eight or um in with the physios right and we got another two lads down the hospital but Hang on, what are they doing hospital for? Well, they're having scans, right? So why are those four blokes over there on their own? Well, they're the goalkeepers. We got four goalkeepers. Yeah. Well, you wouldn't have four at the moment because there's two out on loan. But you take my point. It's so whoever comes in is going to be faced with exactly the same scenario, and we need to cure it. Well, I don't know. I don't know how we can cure it. Let's just wrap up the game, Les. The closing stages of the game. Uh, Sunderland lad. Chances didn't they when um, 
was it Bradley Dack, more of a social media influencer than footballer these days. He should have done better with that header that hit the bar. And then uh, Clark and Bellingham combined to bring the final one of uh, the saves. I mean, you know, in days gone by, City probably would have lost that game, wouldn't they? So it's a testament to some degree of resilience that we, we hang on there, wasn't it? Sunderland have had that problem all season. They yeah. play good football. They've got some a lot of talented young players. They haven't had a player who can stick the ball in the net. They, I think they signed this kid from Benfica on a four-year deal. He was only 19, 20 with their big hopes for. He played some like four or five games and he hasn't been seen since. They had this Eastern European bloke who hasn't played or didn't play today. I don't think he's in the squad today. They played Joe Bellingham up front and he's not a striker. No. Uh, they played Bradley Duck up front. He's not a striker. And they've had that issue all year. I mean, I think Jack Clark, I think he was the best player on the pitch by quite a long way. I yeah, he played that, Premier League football next season, do you think oh, so? Yeah, 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 and he wasn't fully fit. He's only just come back from injury. Yeah. And I thought their centre midfielder, the black guy. Equa. First half, he ran it. And then second half, his passing was very similar to Mark Sykes all over the place. So second half, he wasn't as good. But those were the two best players on the pitch, I thought. Well, they've mm. had issues with... Um, having us with goal scoring and a number nine all season uh, and they'll be looking to invest in the summer if they have a strike if they had a, if they had a decent striker they wouldn't be 12th in the league or 13th or wherever they are no, un unbelievable support up in the northeast wasn't it if i heard correctly forty thousand people yeah. watching that you know and a lot One of winning 10 and they still get forty thousand two hundred ninety eight. i mean Football's, right. an institution. football's an inst yeah, football's an institution it, in the north in the northeast in our part it, of the world. It's probably a bit like on, us. Well, that's the attendance they announced. Um, it'd be interesting to know how many of their season ticket holders are are staying away, the same as we get. So, you know, I wouldn't go on the official attendance because it in it probably includes five or six thousand. It ain't there. Yeah, I mean they got battered, they got battered there last week by Blackburn. So it was never going to be yeah. a game for us because they're always going to be some. There's always going to be some kind of response. Uh, yeah, they've never been the same, have they? We were talking about a striker, Les. I mean, they had Ellis Sims on loan, didn't they, uh, from Everton in the first half of last season, and they were excellent. And Ross Stewart, of course, who went to Southampton, I think, didn't he, in the mm. January last January before last transfer window. They just never replaced those players. And they also had who scored a lot of goals when Lee Johnson was manager there. There was that Charlie Wick, wasn't it? Who got he went from there Mike, to yeah. Mike. Mike, Charlie White. He went from there to Sunderland. And then I did was it him playing for Rotherham last night? Yeah. He got taken off. Yeah, they also had Diallo um on loan from Man United last season, who scored the winner against Liverpool in the FA. And who's Cup. the one that we were linked with that was from Fulham? Um uh, and he went out in France for a bit, tall black. Uh, Magia. Josh, where's he playing now? Stoke? No. Somewhere. Yeah, he's, play, he's playing a, he, yeah, he went to Bordeaux, didn't he? I think he was in a Netflix yeah. uh, documentary. I think, you know, he was one of the wingers yeah. that probably... Uh, talking, talking about, talking about loans. And like, yeah, talking about loans and, you know, recruitment. We keep saying recruitment. He played he play for West Brom, Josh Magia. That's he right. Did. Yeah. He did. He's injured. Um, yeah. do, do you think... Um, Mark, you first. Do you think we'll get, you know, <laughs> hasn't been a threat of relegation for a couple of weeks, but Mabude must be getting corns on his backside because he's just been sat on the bench the whole time he's been here. Do you think it's worthwhile bringing him on just to show a little bit of what he's got? He's only going to, I think the only time you'll, you'll see him possibly is in the penultimate game, maybe against Rotherham or maybe Stoke. Um, he's doing enough to get in the uh, in the squad, but he's not the player that left Man City to go to KVC Westerlo last summer for one and a half, one point six five million. Um, it went wrong for him after about three games. I got this from the correspondent in Belgium. Uh, the manager played him right back, I think, for the third game. It might have been just so he could he could he would he failed, but he just didn't he just didn't get a look in there. Probably distracted by his brother having that car accident in January yeah. as well, where he was lucky to escape with his life. But I mean, he's only made. I think he came on he came on a sub against uh, Southampton when we were three 0 up and made a good drag back to win a free kick. Then we brought yeah. him on against QPR, when the defending deep when he, you know, he was being double marked on the left. I mean, it was really hard for anybody to create an impression. So I just don't know. Um, yeah. I mean, he's he's 
I mean, he's probably doing enough to get in the squad because, you know, he's just got academy players in front of him. Um, uh, I mean, it looks like it looks like a, a bad a bad loan deal, a punt really that just went just went wrong. I'm sure there's nothing wrong with the players' attitude. People like to speculate, don't they? To make it subjective. It just isn't good enough to to, to feature in the first team, I and I don't think we'll take a chance on him. So it's just okay. a, it's been is a that, punt that didn't go right, unfortunately. Is that your view, Ian? That you know he's not lived up to expectation, and there's mitigating circumstances because the recruitment team you know, being berated for it. But, you know, Liam would have known him better than anybody in the recruitment team based on exposure to him over time rather than a few videos on the basis that we don't go and watch them play necessarily. What's your thoughts on Mabude? We do go and watch them. We do go and watch them play. That's completely wrong. But like Mark said, if, if, if the kid's not playing, you're going to have a job watching him, aren't you? I think he looks to me a right winger. And I think that's his best position. Now, I'd like to see him be given a try on the right wing. Um, I'm 99.9% certain we won't sign him because I was having um, obsessed with messaging a French guy who's an agent and he said there's interest in France from the Buddha. Uh, so I said, right, OK, well, what sort of money are we looking at? And he said two million quid. <laughs> So let's put it this way. If he's two million quid, we ain't signing him. No. So, but I want to see him play on the right wing. All right. right? At, in, a, in a game of football, not come on with 20 minutes to go where there's QPR got 11 blokes behind the ball. Um, we haven't got anybody with a creative bone in their body putting little balls in we're behind not for him to run out or anything. Giving, we're not giving him the let's, best chance. Well, yeah, but I mean, now people are, people are so quick to, to write off somebody without seeing them play much football. Um, let's, see him if, play, if you, let's see him play, as you just said. Yeah. But equally, it would be good if he turned out for the under-21s or whatever and got a few minutes I, up there. I would because... ask. Yeah, I would I would ask why he isn't. That that seems odd to me. That's what Ben, but, is, that's what ben has just said. If not, why not yeah. playing in the under-21s? Yeah. Yeah, I, I would, I'd, I'd give him a, uh, give him a go in the under twenty ones, and the under twenty ones is pretty good for people um, coming back um, to play from injury and one thing and another. Having yeah. said that, it hasn't been pretty good for Carl Naismith uh, and Rob Atkinson. Uh, although, in fairness, touching wood all the time, I say this: um, Eamon played forty five minutes and came through it unscathed. So, let's hope well, he's going to be okay. Fingers crossed, another player coming back. Les, we haven't had you on for a while. What's your view of? not filling the bench even yeah because you can put bums on seats out there and give players first team match day experience you know just give them a feel for it you know do you think that's sort of a nice sentiment but not really practical what, what's your view on that? I think, a I think i think a place on the bench should be earned by young players who have shown progress and have shown that they can come on and potentially have an impact on the game i don't think they should just put a kid on the bench to fill in a spot. I think it should be something to aspire to and something for the young players to aim for mm. rather than a token gesture of we're short, you go on the bench this week. Give them something to aim for, something to take pride in. So I've got mm. no issue with him choosing six players on the bench. Um, I've got no issues with him signing Mabudi. It was clearly a Manning signing because he came out and said he was one of the most talented youngsters in the academy setup that he'd seen when he was working somewhere else. And I'd much rather they sign a booty on load and then not sign him than spend, I don't know how many of a million it was on Gustav Engvall and then get stuck with him or sign Harry mm. Cornick for, I don't know how much, 500 grand, 600 grand, and now stuck with him for three and a grand. Half, three, eight, three yeah. and a half years. So he, he was clearly a punt, Mabude. It ain't worked out. And then he'll leave. Happy days. Not a problem. But it was five games... There's five dead rubbers to go between now and the end of the season. It would be nice to see him have a little uh, run out there, wouldn't it? Well, I'd, I'd, I'd rather Mark Sykes played, scored five or six goals, and then came into August in, in first game of the season, absolutely buzzing because he scored ten goals last season. Than giving some kid who clearly has, yeah. he, he clearly hasn't done enough because yeah. if he had, he'd be playing now. This ain't charity. This no. is about, you know, we got priorities. The priorities, the players who are here long term, 
if they can have a big impact at the end of the season, they're going to go into next season with confidence. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, I think that's more of a priority than giving someone minutes or because they might do okay despite the last two months and doing absolutely nothing. Okay. I, think, I think he's probably had his chance. I think he's probably had his chance. And I think he hasn't impressed behind the scenes because, like everyone said, he, he hasn't got the minutes and there must be reasons for that. He's had his chance and he's, he's blown it. No, that's fair enough. Talking about chances and aspiring and everything like that, um, it, it summed up Bristol City, really. Uh, I watched bits, not all, uh, of uh, the FA Youth Cup semi-final against Manchester City. Uh, and, you know, three players injured, different injuries in the first half of that game. We lost it 1-0. But one thing that surprised me, and I heard this today from uh, a source, it was fact, is that the players... And, and, and we've been told by the club, it's been said on the radio, on Radio Bristol, actually, that um, there was a lot of emphasis going into the the under-18s this season. That's why players weren't filling, you know, they were not being put out on loan. This under-18 group is the one for the future. And the current under twenty one, certain of them are going to be leaving, like Idaho and people like that. I would have thought that with the importance of that game, Instead of having a four-hour coach journey, three-and-a-half-hour coach journey, going up to Manchester on the day of the game, I'm going to ask you this first, Mark. I would have thought they'd have taken the lads up the night before, maybe pulled a few strings with Manchester United or one of the other clubs in the area and say, can we just have a bit of light training at your ground to let them see the experience up there and then be better prepared for that game than what we were but considering all the emphasis put on that game and the importance of it as you know to the club were you, were you would you be were you surprised at that when i told it to you earlier would you have expected them to go up and make a thing of it yeah yeah i'm totally amazed that they didn't dave i mean it was a chance to get the first fa youth cup final since 1973 when we lost to Ipswich over two legs. And having the pleasure to watch the under-18s, because I don't watch any City youth football, and I was really impressed by the performance, because I think um, Man City were overwhelmingly the favourites. Um, but considering City lost um, three players, Zach Alley, Tane Anderson and Elijah Morrison, the first half to probably soft tissue industry, in, injuries, excuse me, and that long journey could have been a contributory factor because they were, you know, they were a static, you know, stationary for so long, mm. uh, you know, and on, on a coach, why would you take that chance? I think city did very well. Otherwise the shape that the effort that they put in the shape in it and mere halts, I think is definitely one for the future. Excellent performance in midfield, um, you know, Robin, Robin players and, and, you know, turn the ball over and setting up chances, um, Billy Phillips wasn't bad either, I thought. And the good goalkeeper, Joe Duncan, very safe pair of hands. And all we did was just switch off for one one time in that 90 minutes and they they caught us out. We had to play deep in the uh, second half because we had no more subs. We'd used our three subs. Is that only three subs you were allowed at that I level? I think so. It? Yeah, I think right, it, I think okay. it was. Sure, so uh, I'm not yeah. sure. Well, I'm, I'm guessing we didn't make any more subs, did we? So uh, no, we, no. we that 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 was it. We were we were stuck. So Man City, yeah. we know, were able to bring on stronger players, and and one of those subs, I think Ashton Muir scored the winning goal. But yeah. I mean, it was it was a shame that we risk we we put the players at risk. You know, travelling up on the day. Why would you do that? I just. Yeah. I'm totally amazed by it after yeah. what's well, got into it and having that, that chance, a very slim chance getting in the final. Yeah. But why take that risk? You know, know, stupid, really. Ian, you must be a bit baffled at that, as I was when I heard it. And as you said, Ian, you said on the text feed here, had the three lads played, you know, stayed on, rather, we could well have won it. But, you know, lessons learned there, maybe. You know, and a penny wise and a pound foolish overall. I Yeah, I don't understand it. Um, the three, there were lads out there that really impressed me. Tane Anderson will be with the first team squad um, next season, at least training with him. He'll be playing for the under 21s. Fantastic left back. Um, I really like Jed Miralks in midfield. He, he looks a he looks a bit of a bit of a beast, and he can play football as well. Um, two hamstrings again, and so that they they should fit in brilliantly with the first team. Um, 
and uh, Zach Ali, uh, I think it looked to me like he'd done an abductor or done something to his, his groin. The other player that went off, it wasn't Elijah Morrison because he, our best, one of our best attacking players uh, and like a left winger, he had to play left back uh, because Tane Anderson had gone off. So I can remember two that went off. I can't remember the third. Um, but that was in a before about 35 minutes. And yeah, the traveling could could have been a contributory factor. And I don't know why for such an important game, we couldn't have really pushed the boat out uh, and, and flew them up there. Uh, but certainly the night before and then stay in a hotel. Um, but I mean, I know the team flew up to that, um, flew up uh, Friday to Sunderland. So I, I think, I, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know whether it well, it's all, may have been a financial decision, but yeah, I, I think you're perfectly right. But I still maintain my point. We were out playing them and some of the lads that were on there are playing regularly for Man City under 21s. Yeah. Well, some of the lads that are on there that came on for Man City and that started for Man City are playing regularly for their under 21s. Yeah. So, you know, fantastic effort. And a lot of the players I saw there, I thought, yeah, you're going to be getting pro contracts next year, boys. Yeah. And it's a difficult one. Would some of those players be potential loan players to come down here? And then you talk about Mir Holtz being on the verge of first team next season. Yeah. And we got Josh Stokes come in as well. I know Murphy is a winger, but you know, I mean, let's just wrap up. Murphy's a no, Murphy's a box to box, box to box midfield player, Dave. Not a midfielder. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Well, we got a, we got a, potentially we got three leaving in central midfield. Of course, yeah. But we've also got Max Berg coming in as well. Yeah. Yeah. So Les, um, we I said earlier, let's just let's just wrap this up. I say we're going to be doing our uh, Blackburn uh, game. Uh, uh, reviewing that one on Thursday morning, yeah. But Les, just to wrap up our thoughts uh, on the summer, yeah. Uh, you know, there's a general view in certain quarters of the fan base that you know we've had nine successive seasons at this level. We're stagnating. There's nothing to look forward to. Yada yada yada. Yeah, and we're even on this podcast. You know, we're being accused of you know, towing whatever the party line is or a grim acceptance of where we are, yeah? Um, what would you like to see happen this... What would you like to see happen and what do you think will happen with players moving on out of here as well? I, Conway, I'm praying... Um, yeah, Les, your thoughts on... Just to wrap up well, on... I mean, every player has a price, obviously. Yeah. So... As a player's moving on, it depends how much money is being offered for those in contract. And then you can make a, a more well-informed decision. Joe Williams and Matty James are out of contract. I wouldn't have an issue with them both going. That means there's scope for Manning to bring in his own players. Uh, obviously, if they're in, you know, obviously if they do get a new contract, Manning wants to keep them anyway. So it wouldn't be an issue. Uh, but... Let's see what happens. I think we need to spend a bit of money. I think we need to spend a bit of money on a forward. We've got the Scott and Semenu. I'm assuming we've got the Scott and Semenu money. I mean, I listened to your pod the other, last week and then you were saying we haven't got the money. I don't really understand why we haven't got the money. Why have we not got that money? Well, no, it's not being... Out. I mean, I, if you look at the accounts, you know, the accounts for the year ending 24, i.e. this May, when they eventually come out, they've got the Scott money in there and they're probably going to show a loss of... 2 million because there's a 20 million line on there to do with Scott, right? So, but the, the owner has said the club has got to be sustainable. So he has funded losses over the past six years, say, you know, over 80 million quid. Okay. My view is give Manning some money, let him bring in some players that he wants to bring in. I trust him more than I trust Nigel Pearson. Because I think some of the recruitment that Pearson did with very limited funds has turned out to be pretty average. Um, I like what I'm seeing from Manning. I like what we're seeing from the team. I appreciate there's tons of people out there with their Liam Manning voodoo dolls that they're stabbing into every night. And I know there's a lot of people who are desperate to see him see us lose games so that they can point out how poor a manager he is at this level. But I've been very I've been pretty impressed actually. And I think he's adapted 
uh, in recent games. Uh, people saying, well, uh, look at the QPR manager. Look what a good job he's done. They just lost 2-0 at home to Sheffield Wednesday. So I'm sorry when a new man comes in with a completely, uh, with a range of players who aren't necessarily suited to that style of football. I think he's done a pretty good job so far. Um, so I'd like to see him backed. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with how things are going. I'm what not... what would you see as a, t let's assume, Les, that we sell Conway for t absolute top whack 5 million, yeah? Uh, and the Pring stays and, um, you know, w Williams goes and, and James goes as well. So we got 5 million quid for Tommy. What would you see as a decent transfer of pot on top of that five million? Let's say, uh, including the five million, maybe eight, nine million. Okay, that's, I'd, that's I'd, reasonable. And I would sign Twine if he's under four million. I'd sign him. That gives you five million. I'd sign a striker. I don't know. What's that? Three five, million. Five million. million. Yeah. And then a centre midfielder. Uh, okay. But okay. I don't think they will sign. I don't think they will spend that money on Twine. Uh, but no. I've been quite impressed. Well, we haven't seen much of him, have we? But I think he's got quality, real quality, from seeing him at Swindon, seeing him at MK Dons. And I think people are writing him off too early. And I think actually a year ago, he would have been well out of our range, like Dickie. Um, so, yeah, that's what All I right. Good, though, good points there, Les. Um, Mark, your 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 thoughts on the summer? You know, I mean, when well, I did that piece with uh, with Richard uh, Latham and Chris Honor a couple of weeks ago, you know, on the one hand, Richard Latham was saying that the owner's not going to spend any money, and on the other hand, he's saying, "Oh, and we always sell our best players." And on the other hand, he's saying we should be out there making marquee signings, you know, and talking sort of, you know. A marquee signing is between five and ten million. Ain't going to happen, you know. Ain't going to happen to any club that's not in, and unless Steve goes for it and backs his man, and it's highly feasible that if we continue this good run over the last over the next, remaining five games, yeah, it's not impossible that we could have we could certainly have our third best season in nine. Mm, bit of a push to have our second best season in the nine successes we've had at this level. So, what does a success look like to you in the summer in terms of off-field transfers etc well let's let's look at the first thing first thing we've got to finish the season strongly because you've got to give supporters a reason to buy season tickets so that's one reason then you'd have to make some moves in the transfer market to create more marketing activity to shift more season tickets possibly on the back of losing four or five players because you're looking at king james uh, williams likely they could all go and probably Tommy Conway, possibly Campering as well, and maybe maybe one up, maybe one or two others. Definitely a few of the academy players won't be, you know, some of the players in the periphery, they'll they'll be gone as well. So I don't see us. I mean, anybody is saying we could. Every club's a selling club. It's just the way of the world, you know. People are living in 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 you know la la land if they're thinking we're going to spend huge amounts of money because of FFP and COVID. It just isn't going to happen. We're probably going to have to generate our own income and then possibly top that up with a little bit of money, whatever financial wriggle room we've got with uh, with FFP. Yeah. So we're just going to have to shop around in a very congested market because everybody will be doing the same. Everybody wants a top striker who's going to score 20-plus goals. Everybody wants one of those. Um, so, we, I mean, but that's on the list. I can see Scott Twine signing because I know Liam really, really, really rates, really rates, rates him. But we do need some uh, another, at least another uh, uh, combative central midfielder, perhaps to play alongside Max Bird, another creative. Mm -hmm. We don't know, uh, you know, how Josh Stokes is going is going to be able to step up, or Adam Murphy. Are they going to be able to make an impact and play a few games next season because they're really stepping up? Uh, Adam Murphy from uh, from the Irish League with St Patrick's Athletic. And Josh Stokes is playing at level seven at the moment. He was playing it, it sorry, at level level five. He was playing at level seven last season. Uh, so those are two big big punts. So don't you know expect expect miracles. But we'll just have to wait and see. But he's going to need some movement in the transfer market to shift season tickets. Unfortunately, yeah. because well, you're looking I think, at and that's why I at, say five yeah. star, five star, not five star. That's 
general some decent home performances where yeah we need not, to finish we we've got to finish the season strong wins would shoot us up the table but i think there's an element of disillusionment amongst the fans that they'd like to see a, a, a like, well like liam had around christmas time you know because the games against hull i think it was you know we want to see leicester um southampton hull and middlesbrough type performances from the last three home games of the season. And that might make a difference and being bold in the transfer market. Right. Well, the only team, very yes. quickly, the only team we've been yeah. bold in the transfer market this season are Hull City. Oh. And they've fallen away. They won today, but they've fallen away. Will oh. that affect them yeah. next season? We don't know. But probably with the loan signings well, they made in the money. Ian, to finish with, with you, I mean, I know you probably closer than, apparently closer to us in terms of being ITK. Um, getting a decent forward in this country, you're not going to get much for five million quid. Do you, do you think? Well, just straight two straight questions. Do you think we'll go abroad, and do you think we'll supplement what we've got with loans, which is counter cultural to the bringing players on through the academy? There you go. Yes, and yes, as simple answers. Um, Hall have gambled with loans, very expensive loans paying wages for people like Carvalho. Um, and I watched them play Leeds the other night, and I have to be totally honest, exactly the same as I say about Sunderland. They played Leeds, passed them off the pitch, didn't have anybody who could stick the ball in the net, and Leeds finished up winning 3-1. And they were outplayed by Hull as much as Sunderland outplayed us in the first half today, to give you an idea. So strikers are expensive. Um We've got targets in the UK and we've got targets abroad and it depends on who you can get for what money. And what I'd like to say, and this goes directly to our board, it, you've got, it, if you're not going to step up, something Nigel Pearson was absolutely brilliant at, but he shouldn't have had to do, was manage the expectations of the fan base. Now, think back, what did Nigel Pearson say? about the sale of Alex Scott when he was asked in continual press conferences, what did he say? And to save time, what he said was, don't think we're gonna spend a load of money if we sell him, right? So it's gonna, it, and the other thing he said, if anybody wants him, it's gonna cost them. Okay, Bournemouth wanted it, it cost them. Boy, did Nigel Pearson say, don't think we'll be spending loads of money if we sell him because that was what was agreed yeah. and the money some of the money was spent before he was actually sold that and some of the Semenyo money mm. um on Harry but Paul. it's up to our it was up to to, <laughs> to buy to buy Mimetti, Cornick uh just a point that Benny made on here I have to cover that Liam Manning Nigel Pearson Dean Holden Lee Johnson had final say on every incoming player not outgoing that's down to the board the well the big ones i'm not talking about little little ones but that's so they sign off the players that are coming in so it's no good any of them saying well i, I didn't want him well you could have turned him down all right so we we've got the targets there we know the players we want but it, the board have to step up a manage the expectation of fans and B, give the recruitment team and Liam Manning what they want within reason. And none of them are stupid. Manning's not stupid. And he probably knows League One and League Two far, far better than anybody else at the club because yeah, he's managed you're it. Right. You're right. So, so if Manning say, Manning's not going to come in and say, right, well, for a start, I want Kevin De Bruyne. And then when we've got him, um, I, I want Virgil van Dijk to play centre half behind him. He's not stupid. So he's he's going to come in and the communication from our board, since we had the big kerfuffle when Nigel left, the communication from our board started to get far better. They came yeah. along to Senior Reds, no. agreed to come on this podcast, right? And then all of a sudden it's just gone, gone. Yeah. And they need to come out because it's totally unfair on the recruit Sean Gillespie and his recruitment team, and he's the guy who the agents, the, the, whether they're abroad or in the UK, report into. Brian Tinian, 
who's a technical director. So he's got the overview of the recruitment team, what do we need or what have we got coming through the academy. And Liam Manning, who's got final say. But it's unfair on them. If you say, well, we're not going to spend any money unless you generate it. You're going back to the thing that Nigel Pearson, in my opinion, correctly described as bonkers yeah. of having a strategy of selling your best players every year. Now, well, if you yeah, sell your best you players, say, yeah. say you sell a bloke for 20 million and you can go out and get three blokes for 4 million, it's not so bonkers. But that's the way it has to work. Uh, all right. I'm sure we'll talk about this uh, again. I'm just thinking, picking up on what my fix said on here, Hull can sell Jacob Greaves and Philogene for around 40 million, which is why they've taken the risk, right? When, when Conway 40 goes million? Out, well, that's just I, I, I think they're dreaming. When Conway goes out the door, we're really looking to those under 18s then as the next big eight figure transfer out. Right, that's my view. All right, but well, we can debate that till the cows come out. All right, I think we're done. As I say, we'll be back Thursday morning at nine o'clock doing our thing on the uh, Blackburn game and then uh, Huddersfield next Sunday morning. That will be at nine o'clock. Les, great to have you on. You, uh, you've you been very balanced with your views, reasoned arguments with what you said. Uh, Ian, good to have you on, as always. And Mark, everybody who's uh, listened, you know, we're, I think we're getting more people looking at our ugly mugs than listening to the podcast at a moment because I looked up on the YouTube channel and they're all between 11 and 1500 views. But as I said before, you know, that's probably people having two minutes and thinking that's enough and going back and listening to us on Spotify. But, I, don't, uh, I don't know. And by the way, in, term, in terms of the look, I think Le Les is looking a bit like, you know, he, he's got the got the beard on and all the rest of it. He's looking a bit of a movie star lately. i got to be honest. Yeah. No, it's good to have you on, Les. You're always welcome on here. So, everybody, thanks a lot for uh, listening. Yeah, well done, mate. Come on, you Reds. See you later. <laughs>